Hi, everyone, and a pleasant good afternoon to you. I am Tony Abadie, and we are here at Lions Field this afternoon as the Fort Scott Greyhounds get ready to take on the Allen Red Devils today. We are proud to bring you the the uh, the broadcast here on Duckbait TV this afternoon. Uh, we'll have both games for you today. First game should be the seven-inning game, and then game two will be nine innings here from Lions Field. And looks like it's going to be a gorgeous day. A bit windy, so you'll probably hear that on the microphone throughout the afternoon. But uh, excited to be here at Fort Scott Community College and bringing you uh, some Greyhound baseball here today. Fort Scott comes in at 30 and seven overall, 10 and four in the league. Allen, uh, not quite as good on the record, excuse me, so far this year as they are 17 and 20 overall. See that on your scoreboard there, uh, five and 13 in the league. But uh, looking, you never know. That's why they play the games, right? So Fort Scott looking to get a good start here today from Gavin Shear. And um, hopefully he can have a, a good game here today against the Allen Red Devils in game one of this doubleheader. Allen will lead off with right fielder Kyle Clu uh, Cluino and then left fielder Garrett Rush. Bat second, hitting third will be second baseman Kale Clark. And if anybody gets on, it'll be Armando Navarro. Uh, hitting in the cleanup spot today in game one of this doubleheader. The Greyhounds in their home whites with the pinstripes. Allen, gray pants, black jerseys, red tops, or red caps, at least red batting helmets anyway. And we're just about ready to get things underway here today. Thanks again for joining us on Duckbait TV. First pitch from Gavin Shearer is a little bit low and away for ball one. And now he hits the first batter. That'll put a runner on first with nobody out here in the top of the first. And that'll bring Garrett Rush to the plate. First pitch to Russ. Yeah, Rush, rather, is in there for a strike. One looked like a breaking ball that just did miss inside. One ball and one strike. Shearer ready. Here's the pitch. Just off the inside corner again. Two and one. There's a strike, so that'll even the count. Two balls, two strikes now. On the batter, Garrett Rush. He's in left field today for the Allen Red Devils. Throw back to first, not in time. And a swing and a miss on the 2-2 pitch. So the first strike out of the game results in the first out of the afternoon. And that'll bring Cale Clark to the plate. With one out and one on. Left-handed batter facing the right-handed pitcher. That one catches the outside corner, nothing and one. And has the side, now throws back to first, and the runner is back safely. Again, Kyle Lueno was hit by a pitch to lead the game off, so he's at first base for the Allen Red Devils.
Here's the 0-1 pitch. That one is a little high, so that'll even the count. Pitch on the way, that's fouled off. Another good count for Gavin Shearer, the Greyhound pitcher. One ball and two strikes. One two pitch, tried to get him fishing for one there, but didn't work. Two balls and two strikes. to throw back to first. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. That one's hammered into left field. It'll be a base hit. And runners will be on first and second now for Allen. They play station to station with one out here in the First inning, Armando Navarro will step in now. That one's grounded. Oh, nice pick at third. Oh, I thought he got it. It's going to get right by the third baseman and into left field for another base hit. So bases will be loaded. Son playing tricks on me here at Lions Park here in the early going. So base is loaded now for Allen. In the top of the first inning, and it will send the catcher, Mies Robers, to the plate. Still one out. Opportunity for a double play to get out of the inning even. For Fort Scott, first pitch is low. The 1-0 pitch, that one's just off the outside corner. One ball and one strike. Oh, it did catch the outside corner. Got to wait on the umpire there. One ball and one strike. 1-1 one, one pitch, that one's a little bit low. 2-1 and one now. Excuse me, it is 3-0. I didn't think I saw him point. They've got 2-1 and one on the scoreboard, but it's 3-0. Rio pitch, that one's in there for a strike. So three balls and one strike now. Swung through and missed. So now the count is full. So great job by Shear to come back after getting down three and zero in the count. Now one pitch away from getting this batter out, and it's a called third strike. Just caught the inside corner. Roberts didn't like it, but it is a called third strike and the second strike out of the inning. So that'll bring Colin Godfrey to the plate. He's the DH today for the Red Devils. Base is still loaded, but now two outs here in the top of the first. First pitch is a little bit low. Nice job by the Greyhound catcher. Ty Golusky getting down to get that ball. 1-0 pitch on the way. That one's a little bit high, so 2-0. 2 -0 pitch. This is grounded right side. Going to be a tough play. They'll get it over to first. Nice job by the second baseman there for Fort Scott, Tristan Shingamatsu. And my apologies if I mispronounced that name. I should have checked that with Coach uh, beforehand. But uh, nice play by Fort Scott defensively. So they Allen loads the bases there in the top of the first, but get nothing out of it. So Fort Scott able to get through that one with nothing on the scoreboard. So we'll take just a short break, come back with the bottom of the second. We've got Allen nothing and Fort Scott coming up.
So your lineup for the Fort Scott Greyhounds, the leadoff with Mike Polabinski. He's in right field today. Luke Stout is the third baseman, batting second. Hitting third will be Jarrett Nelson. He's at first base. Cleaning things up is, Ty, is catcher Ty Galeski. And then Joey Little bats fifth as the first pitch at the bottom of the first comes, and it's fouled off right side by Pol Polabinski. Hitting in the sixth spot will be Cord Dabrinski. He's the DH today for Fort Scott. Aiden Slot bats seventh and is in center field. Tristan Shigematsu made the great play to his left to end the top of the first. He's at second base today, hitting in the eight hole for Fort Scott. That one swung through and missed by Polabinski. It's nothing in two. Owen Rush rounds out the order with Gavin Shear on the mound. Of course, Rush is at shortstop today for the Greyhounds. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Just off the inside corner. Looked like Polabinski maybe thought that was going to be a breaking ball, but it didn't break quite enough. He was leaning out over the plate and nearly took that off the shin or off the elbow guard. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Sweeps through the strike zone and out of the strike zone. One and two, or two and two rather. Two-two pitch on the way. That one is high, so that'll fill the count. Three balls and two strikes. Payoff pitch on the way. That one is a call of third strike. Polabinski well, didn't like it, but that's the call. Just did catch the outside corner. Now one out with the bases still empty. And it's Luke Stout, the third baseman, stepping in. First pitch is on the outside corner for a strike. Polabinski, 6'4", freshman from Plainville, Plainfield, Illinois. Stout, who grounds to second here, and that's fairly routine play. That'll be out number two here in the inning, but Stout is a 6'1 sophomore from Midwest City, Oklahoma. Now with two outs, it'll be Jarrett Nelson, the first baseman. Nelson, a 6'4 sophomore from Nixon, Missouri, not too far from Fort Scott. Takes a called strike on the first pitch, nothing in one. He's fouled off right side. Nothing in tune to the count on the Greyhounds' first baseman. Bottom of the first here at Lions Field. Thanks for joining us on Duck Bay TV today. Here's the 0-2 pitch. This one's flied out towards right field, and it will get out of play foul down the right field line. Fairly nice day temperature-wise today. We've got 67 right now here at Lions Field. It is pretty breezy wind out of the south. The American flag in the, just beyond the right field wall is pretty much straight out, has been since first pitch. The noise you hear through the microphone is the wind here today. That's how windy it is here at field level. And now hit by pitch. Breaking ball that didn't break there for the Red Devil pitcher. And Jarrett Nelson will be the first Greyhound base runner of the afternoon. Bottom of the first, two outs. Runner on first now for Ty Galeski, the cleanup hitter and catcher today for the Ty for. The Greyhounds, I know I was going to do that a few times, so apologize. We're not with the high school team today. It's the JUCO, of course, the Greyhounds. 
against the Allen Red Devils. First pitch is in there for a strike, nothing in one. Ty, a six-foot freshman from Morgantown, West Virginia. A one pitch on the way. This one's fouled to the right side. Nothing to the count. Morgantown, of course, the home of West Virginia, the West Virginia Mountaineers. Still kind of odd to say that a team from West Virginia is in the Big 12, but it's been the case for many years now. Here's a line drive right to the second baseman, and it's going to be out number three. So a tough luck there for the Greyhounds in the top of the or the bottom of the first, rather. But uh, we'll get through the first and head to the second in just a moment. We're still scoreless here at Lions Field. This is Greyhound Baseball on Duckbait TV. Leading off the top of the second for Allen and taking a first pitch strike. Is Parker Martin. And now it's one and one as the second pitch is a little bit low. One one is outside. bit low there so three balls and one strike now and a five pitch walk to Martin to lead off the inning Brings Logan Martin to the plate. First pitch a little bit low. Martin, a third baseman today for Allen, and he takes a strike there, so that'll be one ball and one strike now to the batter. Ground ball foul, so that'll be one ball and two strikes now. The count on Martin.
Ground ball, left side, a slow roller, picked by the shortstop over to the first long throw is not in time. Great, uh, great effort by Owen Rush, but the ball just not quite hit fast enough. And in fact, kind of an odd thing with the new turf field here, relatively new turf field. Seems like the new kind of turf here, the field turf, slows the grounders down. I know a lot of folks used to talk about at Kauffman Stadium when they had the old the old school turf, it would speed the ball up. It seems like, especially in baseball, grounders get slowed down a little bit more with this new field turf that everybody's putting in now. 2-0 the count on the batter. Holden Ayers. Tough luck there for the Greyhounds. And now it's 3-0 and on the batter errors. See Gavin's got to settle down here a little bit on the mound, the pitch. That one catches the zone, 3-1. and Ayers, the number nine batter, he may be waiting for another strike to go in there. Checks the runners, the 3-1. He swings on that one, and that's going to be a bloop base hit down in front of the left fielder. Rounding third, coming to home, and will score. The first run is Parker Martin. That one just off the end of the bat into left field and into the teeth of that wind, so it got cut down even. Uh, didn't have a lot of exit velocity or whatever they call it now to begin with, and they got cut down by that wind that's blowing in from left field, so... Allen will get the first run of the ball game here. Still nobody out, still runners on first and second as the lineup card turns over. Kyle Cluino will check, will come in. He is, oh, uh, well, still looking for his first official at bat. He was hit by a pitch his first time. Stranded at third in the first inning. Time call to get the uh, scoreboard in check here. One ball and one strike. And swing and miss. Looked like Colino was looking for something else and was fooled a little bit on that pitch from Gavin. One, two on the way. Fouled off right side. Nobody out, two runners on, one, two pitch. Nice breaking ball that went right over the middle of the plate and a strikeout to get the first out of the inning. Now Garrett Rush will come back to the plate. First pitch to Russ is in there for a strike. Pitch was low, was swung on and missed. Looked like Rush was trying to do something to get the runners to uh, move in there. Maybe he was fooled just a little bit on uh, what he saw there, but anyway, either way, it's 0-2, the count now on him. Gavin has the sign, checks the runners, the pitch, and this one's fouled off left side, it'll stay 0-2. Gavin in the first two innings so far has gotten himself into some trouble out on the bases, but first inning, he had the bases loaded with one out, was able to get a strike out and a ground out to end the inning without any run score. Now the ball is going to bounce up and get away from the catcher enough to where the runners will move up 90 feet. So Martin up to third. Ayers up to second. One ball and two strikes now.
swing and a miss and another strikeout for Gavin Shearer. And now time called. Coach Hill will go out and have a chat with his pitcher. And he'll make a pitching change here. Nelson is the new pitcher for the Greyhounds, a 5'10 sophomore, left-hander from Houston, Texas. So the lefty comes in to face the left-handed batter, Cale Clark here, who singled to left field his first time. First pitch in there for a strike. Nothing in one. Oh, one pitch, a little bit high. That'll leave it to count. Grounder foul. Passed first. Count stays one ball and two strikes. Two pitch, a little bit low, got away from catcher Golusky, but he's able to pounce on it quickly enough. The runners stay where they're at. Runners on second and third, two outs. Top of the second inning, it's one nothing. Uh, Allen pitch is low, so that'll fill the count. Three balls and two strikes. Payoff pitch just off the outside corner, and that'll walk Clark. And load the bases now for Armando Navarro, who singled his first time. Still two outs for the Greyhounds here in the frame. The pitch is 
low and inside, so one ball and no strikes. And that one grounded foul at the plate. So it evens the count, one ball and one strike on Navarro. First baseman today for the Allen Red Devils. Here in game one of this doubleheader, of course, they'll play seven innings here in the first game unless they go extra innings in the first game. Nine innings in the second game, unless they play that many in the first game, then they'll play the seven inning game second. One ball and two strikes now on the batter. I'm sure many of you know the inning rules on that. Here's a ball lined out towards center field. It's going to drop right in front of the center fielder. One run is in. Here comes the second run. The will score. And so two more across the plate for the Red Devils. And that makes it three to one, three to nothing here. Allen Community College in the second. Foul ball on the first pitch to Mies Robers. And now one and one. Nelson ready. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch that's fouled off left side. Sports guy, I don't think I went through the outfield earlier. Joey Little's in left. Aiden Slot is in center. Mike Polabinski is in right. He's fouled off right side and out of play. Around the infield, first to third. Jarrett Nelson is at first. Tristan Shigematsu is at second. Owen Rush is at short. Luke Stout is at third. Of course, Zach Nelson now on the mound for the Greyhounds with Ty Galuski behind the plate. Now it's two balls and two strikes with two outs and two on here in the top of the second inning. Three runs already have crossed the plate for the Red Devils. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swung on, popped up into center field. Camping out underneath it and making the catch is slot, and that will retire the Allen Red Devils here in the second inning. But they do plate three, and they lead it three to nothing as we head to the bottom of the second in just a few moments. This is Greyhound Baseball on Duck Bait TV.
So as we head to the bottom of the second inning, Joey Little will lead things off for the Greyhounds. Trying to get some runs back here after Allen put a three spot in the top of the inning. First pitch to Little is just off the outside corner. Two balls and no strikes now. Now ball hit out towards right field. It's going back deep, 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 and gone. Ring the bell, Joey Little. It's a dinger for the Greyhounds. They get a run back. Pitch to Cord Dobrinsky is out towards center field. Coming in and making the catch, having to fight the wind is Colton Ayers, but he does make the catch, and that's out number one. So now Aiden Slot will, ch will step up. First pitch there is fouled off. Pitch on the way, looked like a breaking ball just outside. Two balls and one strike on the center fielder, Aiden Slot. This one's fouled back and out of play, so the count evens at two balls and two strikes now. Slot, a 5'10 sophomore out of Willis, Texas. Fouled off left side. Pudence is ready. Here's the 2 2 pitch. That one's outside, so it'll fill the count. Good eye there from. Slot. Now the 3-2 pitch on the way. Grounded left side. That's going to get through for a base hit. So a great job by Slot to work the count and then get the base hit. So runner on first now. One run already in. One out here in the bottom of the second for the Greyhounds. Maka Shikamatsu steps up. First pitch to him is on the outside corner, nothing in one. Runner on first, bottom of the second. Scott trails it three to one, but they've already scored once here in the inning. Oh, one pitch. This one's fouled off left side and will get out of play behind the Allen dugout.
Shigematsu, a 5'10 sophomore from Ely, Hawaii. He's a long way from home here in Fort Scott. Here's the ball fouled off left side. That's going to get out of play. Just out of the reach of the third baseman, Logan Martin, for Allen. Everybody ready? Here's the 0-2 pitch. Hammered down the left right field line, and it's going to be fouling out of play towards the Greyhound bullpen. Two pitch on the way. That one's high and outside. And we'll make it one and two. Why he's got a list of good baseball players, though. Shane Victorino, the all star and World Series champion for the Philadelphia Phillies, came from Hawaii. There's a line drive right to the bag at first base. And a tough luck double play to end the inning as that was hit right to Armando Navarro. He was holding the runner on and just turned right around and slapped the bag and gets the double play there to end the inning. But the Hounds do get a run here in the bottom of the second. We'll head to the third in just a moment. This is Fort Scott Greyhound Baseball on Duck Bay TV. So as we head to the third inning, it is going to be Colin Godfrey leading things off for the Red Devils. He grounded out to end the first, his first time up. That was against the starter, Gavin Shear. We'll see what he does against Zach Nelson now. He came in to get the last out of the second inning. This one's fouled back and out of play. up the middle and it's going to be safe. It's a base hit. Tough play there for Rush, the shortstop. So a leadoff man on for the third straight inning here for Allen. They had a hit by pitch to lead the game off in the first and then a walk. Actually a walk and two singles. The first three batters in the second inning, now an infield single. Lead off the third and first pitch is outside to Parker Martin. One 
1-0 pitch. That's high. Top of the third, nobody out, runner on second. Batter shortening the bunt and takes a pitch just a bit low. 3 balls and no strikes. Batter Martin shortening the bunt again. We'll take the bat back and takes ball 4. bring Logan Martin to the plate, the third baseman for the Red Devils. He singled. Another one of those slow rollers in the second inning. Here's a bunt right out in front of the mound. Nice play by the Greyhounds to get one out. On the sack bunt. Runners move up to second and third now. Colton Ayers, the number nine hitter, will come to the plate. Here's the pitch, a little bit low. It's away from the catcher and got a little bit too far away and everybody's gonna advance. So they, they called the bat, the runner out initially, but the ball had gotten away from the Greyhounds there. So Godfrey is safe. And another run scores. Also, Parker Martin will advance to third. Tough start to this one here for the Greyhounds. Foul. Count evens at one and one. One ball, one strike, one out, one on here in the top of the third inning. Allen with the lead four to one over the Greyhounds. Here's the pitch. That one's a little high. Two balls and one strike. High and tight there, three balls and one strike now. On the batter, Ayers, who singled his first time, got an RBI single back in the second inning. It's a strike, so three balls and two strikes now. From the pitcher, Zach Nelson. Two pitch on the way, grounded right to first base. A worm burner, but a pick. Nice job. A run will score, but they do get the out. So nice job by Jarrett Nelson to stay down on that ball. He was. It, it looked like he was expecting a hop. You would naturally expect the hop there at the end, but it didn't. It stayed on the ground. He stayed down, made the play, and gets the out at first. A runner does score from third, Parker Martin. So that makes it 5-1, to one. Allen. But there are two outs and nobody on now. Lineup turns back over. Foul ball left side. And Kyle Quint Quino is at the plate. He's been hit by a pitch and struck out looking in his two plate appearances so far today. Balls. Even 
should be 0-2 on the batter. They've got 0-1 on the scoreboard. Here's the pitch off the outside corner, and it is one ball and two strikes. Two runs already in here in the top of the third inning. Three runs cross the plate for Allen in the second. They lead it 5-1 to one over the Greyhounds. Pitch outside. Well, even the count. Looks like Zach a little bit frustrated with himself. Maybe tried a breaking pitch that didn't quite catch the outside corner. 2-2. Two -two. Had some movement on it, but it moved outside. So three balls and two strikes. Like maybe a two-seam fastball that time. Like he threw it again and missed just barely again. So a walk here to the leadoff batter will bring Garrett Rush back to the plate. He struck out twice already today. This will be his first at bat against Zach, though. He struck out twice against Gavin early. Here's the pitch, runner goes, pitches outside, throw down to second, throw beat him, and the tag did as well. So Fort Scott will get out of the inning with no more damage, but two runs do cross the plate for the Red Devils. They lead it now five to one. We'll head to the bottom of, of the third in just a moment. This is Fort Scott Greyhound ba Baseball on Duck Bay TV. So leading off the third inning for the Greyhounds, it'll be Owen Rush, his first at bat of the afternoon. After that, it'll be back to the top of the order with Mike Polabinski. First pitch in this at bat is outside. Ball one. A six foot sophomore from Wichita, Kansas. 2 0 the count now on him at the play. So Wichita has got its own baseball history. Here's the 2 0. It's in there for a strike. For many years, the Wichita Wranglers were the double A affiliate of the Kansas City Royals, but Wichita State had a dynasty back in the 80s and early 90s, this pitch is fouled off. Two balls and two strikes. Won a national title, went to the College World Series a few times. Two-two pitch on the way. Hammered into center field. That's going to be down for a base hit. So Rush gets a leadoff single here to start the third. Well, that brings Polabinski back to the plate. Mike struck out looking his first attempt. The bottom of the first, this one is gonna 
Ground it towards the left side. They'll try to get the force at second, and they do. It was hit in that 5.5 hole in between short and third. Shortstop Parker Martin got over, slid, made the nice play. Now Luke Stout will, will step up. First pitch to him is lined to short. They get the out there. They tried to get a double off at first and doesn't work. Nice eyes by Rush to get back on that one. So now Jarrett Nelson will step in. Two outs. And a runner on first, first pitch. Is high and outside. One oh pitch on the way. This one's grounded foul as well. So for the first time, one ball, one strike. Uh, Jarrett Nelson. Nelson was hit by a pitch his first time. Was the first base runner for the Greyhounds, but was stranded at first by the end of the first inning. One one pitch misses as well. Two balls and a strike. On first baseman, wearing number 17 this afternoon for the Greyhounds. Two one pitch on the way. That one's a called third strike or called second strike. <laughs> Umpire just getting his, his work in there. He rung him up, but on the second strike, that happens from time to time. See enough baseball, you tend to forget the count every now and then. That pitch is outside, so three balls and two strikes. Full count, two outs, bottom of the third, runner on first for the Greyhounds, trailing it five to one. Nelson waits, here's the pitch, runner goes. Off the inside corner, it's a walk. Polobinski will move on down to second. Now Ty Galuski will step in with two outs and runners on first and second. I lined out to second base his first time. See what he can do here. First pitch to him. This one's hammered to right field. That's going to go back. It is gone. Ring the bell, Ty Golusky. A three-run shot. That'll cut the lead to one. Home runs are great, especially when there's runners on base. That was the case there for the Greyhounds. It's now five to four, and Joey Little steps in. He got hit by a pitch. Now Cord Dobrinsky will step in. He's the DH today for the Hounds. First pitch to him is fouled out of play. He flew out to center field his first time, back in the second. Now, 
one and one. Peyton Pudens has done a really nice job on the hill today for, e for Allen. Struggling a little bit after giving up that home run to Golosky. One one pitch on the way, and this one swung through and missed. Maybe even foul tipped it. So one ball and two strikes. One two pitch on the way. That one's a little bit high. So I'll even the count. And again, all of this coming with two outs. Most of it coming with two outs here in the inning for the Greyhounds. 2-2 two -two pitch. That's high again to fill the count. Owen Rush singled the lead off the inning, but then Mike Polabinski grounded into a fielder's choice. So he reached, but they got Rush out at second. And then Luke Stout lined out. Then a walk. Three-run homer by Golusky. Ground ball foul. And then Little was just hit by a pitch. To continue the inning to Dobrinsky. Pudence ready. Here's the 3 2 once again, and it's fouled back and out of play. Of course, three balls, two strikes, two outs. The runner will be going as he was there. Oh, well-placed hit in the gap. Could tie this game. Three, two. Low. The walk of Dobrinsky. And that'll bring Aiden Slot back to the plate. Now time's called here for Allen as their coach will head out and have a chat with their pitcher. The wind is blowing from left to right here at the ballpark today out of the south, and it may have helped those two home runs. They were both to right field. American flag in right field makes it at least appear that the, the wind is coming straight out of left field towards the Greyhound dugout. So I don't know how much the wind helped those home runs. Yeah, the conference flags in left field are blowing a little bit more from the southwest, southeast, so Wynn may have helped those those home runs a little bit, but they were poked too. First pitch here is a called strike to slot. He singled and then was doubled off first to end the second inning. Tough luck line drive as Shigematsu hit one right at the first baseman who was holding slot on at first and just turned right around and tapped the base for the double play. This one's hit into right uh, right field and it's going to be caught by the right fielder. So that'll end the inning, but Fort Scott does get three more runs and they cut this lead to one. It's five to four. We'll head to the fourth in just a moment. This is Fort Scott baseball, Fort Scott Greyhound baseball on Duck Bait TV.
So as we head to the top of the fourth inning, it'll be two, three, and four. Garrett Rush was standing at the plate when Kyle Quilino was caught stealing to end the third. Here's a ball fouled right side. Now the 0-1 pitch on the way. This one's fouled off left side. pitch on the way. This is hammered right towards the shortstop, but Owen Rush didn't really have to do a whole lot to make that catch, and it's out number one. Cale Clark will step in now. Clark so far one for one officially. He singled back in the first. He's also walked in this game. First pitch from Nelson is in there for a strike. Oh, one. This is hit out towards left center. It's going to get down for a base hit. How far will it scoot? It'll scoot all the way to the wall. Rounding first, heading for second. We'll see if he goes for three. He's going to stop at second. So a double for Clark. ball and no strikes. And the 1-0 pitch is swung through and missed. This is Armando Navarro at the plate. He's got two singles already today. So he is two for two. One-one pitch is in there for a strike. One, two is swung on and missed. So a strikeout. Zach Nelson, and now there are two outs in the inning. First pitch to the Red Devil catcher is outside, 1-0. and oh. Robers is 0 for 2 so far today. He struck out looking his first time. It's also flied out to center field. pitch on the way. That's high and outside. And a four pitch walk. We'll put runners on first and second now for the Red Devils.
Still two outs. Hounds can get out of this with no damage. Get the batter here. This is Colin Godfrey. This one's fouled off left side and out of play. Godfrey is the DH. He's one for two today. Singled and scored in the third. He's also grounded out to second base. That ended the first inning. 0-1 pitch. Ooh, high and over the catcher's glove. Back to the backstop. So the runners will move up on the wild pitch. One pitch is high. Two balls and one strike. Again, the Greyhound still in a good position here. Zach Nelson just focused on the batter. And they can get out of the inning here with two outs. Here's the pitch. That one's high again. So three balls and one strike. Nelson came in in relief of the starter, Shear, in the second inning. He's pitched well. That one's in there for a strike, so that'll fill the count three and two. Zach gave up two runs in the third, but his team got him back with three in the bottom of the inning. And now a walk, that'll load the bases. Pitch was low and away. Tried to get Godfrey fishing a little bit, but didn't work. And it looks like we're going to have another pitching change. For the Greyhounds.
pitcher for the Greyhounds will be Wyatt Foley. Wyatt, 6'1", sophomore from Girard, Kansas. In eight appearances so far, he's thrown 10 in two-thirds innings. First pitch here is a little bit high, ball one. He's given up 12 runs on 17 hits. He's walked seven, struck out nine. And has an ERA of 10.13. Fouled off. Greyhound sophomore coming in with two outs. Runners on first or on second and third. One zero pitch. This one's fouled out of play. One ball and two strikes. Bases loaded, top of the fourth inning. Sports guy trying to get through this one. Here's the ground ball out towards second base. Nice pick over there by Shigematsu. And he gets the ball over to first, and that's in time for out number three. So Allen loads the bases. Greyhounds had to change pitchers again, but Sports guy gets through it without anything crossing the plate. So still five to four. Red Devils on top. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth in just a moment. This is Sports Scott. Greyhound Baseball on Duckbait TV. Shigematsu will lead off the inning for the Greyhounds. First pitch is roped out towards center field. That's going to get down for a base hit. Now that'll bring Owen Rush to the plate. He's the shortstop for the Greyhounds today. Is that just one? At bat so far today, singled. Back in the third. Pitch catches the outside corner, 0 1. We'll get through the right side for another base hit. Shigematsu had to hold up, so he will only get to second, but runners on first and second now. With nobody out for the top of the order. Polabinski will step in.
Polovinsky is 0 for 2 officially, struck out and reached on a fielder's choice. But he did score on the three run homer by Golotsky in the last inning. First pitch here is taken high. Long look by the pitcher Pudens. Now it's shortened to bunt, and that's a good bunt up the first base line. Throw will get the runner, or the batter, but runners move up to second and third on the play with less than two outs. Luke Stout will step in. One out, runners on second and third. First pitch to him here is in there for a strike. Stout over two today. He's grounded out and lined out. But a golden opportunity here for the Greyhounds. 0 1 pitch. Fouled off left side. Will it stay in play? Running over there to have a look is the third baseman, Logan Martin, but it does get out of play. So just the second strike, nothing in two. two on the way. This was fouled right back to us here. Calroar main 0-2. Grounded. Just foul past third. Two pitch on the way, that's high. Ball one. One, two. This is grounded foul. It's up in the Greyhound dugout over there. One-two pitch, outside, good eye. Looked like there was some late movement on that one as well. Nice job to hold up for Luke Stout. A lot of left-handed batters in the lineup today against the right-hander Pudens. This one's hit foul, but will stay in play for Logan Martin and a foul out and a tough second out for the Greyhounds here in the fourth. So now Jarrett Nelson will get his opportunity. First pitch to him here. This is hit high, but foul and out of play down the right field line. So a long, loud strike there. 
Tor Nelson, who is still looking for his first official at bat here today. He's had two plate appearances. He was hit his first time back in the first inning. He's also walked in this game. That was in the third. Here's the pitch. That one's a strike, so nothing in two. Runners on second and third. Fort Scott had the first two runners reach in this inning. A pair of singles for runners on first and second with nobody out. A sacrifice bunt by Paul Obinski. Moved them to second and third with one out. But now a foul out and now an 0-2 count. Now it's one and two as that pitch was high. Luke Stout fouled out to third and now Jared Nelson down in the count one and two. Here's the pitch. This one's fouled off right side, not a play. Again, we'll have two, in, two games here today for the Greyhounds. This first one will be seven innings unless it goes extras. And then game two would be nine. And gets away from the catcher. This should score a run. Coming down from third and tying the game is Shigematsu. Russell move up to third on the wild pitch. And the Greyhounds have it tied at five all. Fouled back out of play. And a foul tip that was caught by the catcher, so that'll be a strikeout to end the inning. Fort Scott, though, does get one run and ties the game here in the bottom of the fourth. Take a short break and head to the fifth when you come back. This is Fort Scott Greyhound Baseball on Duck Bay TV. So leading off the top of the fifth inning for the Allen Red Devils, it's Logan Martin. Then Colton Ayers. And then back to the top of the order with Kyle Cluino. Logan Martin so far is 0 for 1. Excuse me, 1 for 1. He singled back in the second, singled and scored a run. He also was out on a sacrifice bunt in the third. He got it 
and one count facing him here. Wyatt Foley still on the mound for the Greyhounds. That one foul back to the screen. One ball and two strikes. This one's hit towards the right side. Coming in is the right fielder. And Polovinsky will make the play, and that's out number one. Bring Colton Ayers back to the plate. He's one for two. Swings through the first pitch here. Strike one. Singled and scored in the three-run second inning for the Red Devils. Grounded out to first his second time back in the third inning. 0-1 pitch on the way. This one's fouled back to the screen. 0-2. Two pitches a little low. Now the one-two pitch on the way. Just off the outside corner, two balls and two strikes. Nice mix on the roster for the Greyhounds. First, we mentioned Foley from Girard just down the road. This one's hit out towards right field. Coming in is Polabinski once again. He'll make the catch, and that's out number two. A couple of former Fort Scott Tigers on the roster as well, but then you've got guys like Maka Shigematsu from Hawaii. Agalusky from Morgantown, West Virginia. So, nice group of guys on this Greyhound Ball Club this season. And they've had a great season so far. Hopefully they can keep it going. Owen won the count. On the batter, Cluino now swung through and missed. So nothing and two. They didn't, they didn't start great for the Greyhounds. Red Devils scored three in this second. There's a called third strike, and that'll finish the inning. We'll finish that thought in just a moment. But a great fifth. That is the first one, two, three inning thrown by a Fort Scott pitcher here this afternoon. And that'll take us to the bottom of the fifth in just a few moments. We're tied at five. This is Fort Scott Greyhound Baseball on Duck Bait TV. So a new pitcher for the Allen Red Devils here 
as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. We'll tell you about him in just a moment. As Fort Scott will lead off the bottom of the fifth with Ty Goluski, who just had a home run, three-run homer his last time up back in the third. Nothing and two the count. Seth Broadwell is the new pitcher for Allen. Another right hander and that pitch is low. One and O oh the count. Excuse me, one and two, the count on the batter. Goloski, again, he's one for two with that three-run homer. Big turning point in this game so far for the Greyhounds back in the third. And that got the Greyhound catcher on the leg there. intentionality of hit by pitches in college is almost zero right so a batter gets hit it is incredibly rare that it's on purpose the interesting thing is Joey Little hit a home run his first at bat his second at bat he was hit by a pitch Ty Golusky, his second at bat he hit a home run his third at bat just a moment ago was hit by a pitch. And now they'll throw him out as the ball got away from the catcher, but not too far away. And Golusky was thrown out trying to make it to second on a wild pitch. So base is now empty. It's a major league game, and you see a guy, two guys that hit home runs and they're very next to bat they get hit by a pitch you think something's going crazy but that is not the case in college most of the time I'd say probably 99% of the time there's a breaking ball that broke right over the inside part of the plate one 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 and one the count One pitch on the way. That one just did miss the outside corner. This one's hit out towards right field. Will the wind carry it? It's going back, but caught by the right fielder. Well, went home. Second out here in the inning. And Cord Dobrinsky will step in. First pitch here is a ball low. Brinsky flied out to center field his first time. He's also walked in this game for the Greyhounds. Here's the 1-0. Swung through and missed. Looked like Cord maybe got a little bit fooled on that previous pitch. It was low and actually skipped away from the catcher, but I think he thought it was going to break back or something like that. He swung anyway. Couldn't hold up. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Oh, breaking ball that slipped, visibly slipped out of the hand of the pitcher and ended up behind the ear of Cord Dobrinsky. 2-1 the count.
pitch on the way. That one broke better for the pitcher Broadwell, but broke clear out of the strike zone. So three and one now the count on the batter Dabrinsky, looking for his first hit here in the game today. Broadwell. Could be three one pitch. That one catches the zone. Three and two now the count. With two outs and nobody on. Then he started with Ty Golusky getting hit by a pitch, but then he was thrown out trying to move to second on what would have been a wild pitch. They go down as a caught stealing. And now time called as pitching coach, it looks like, for the Red Devils coming out there. Kind of interesting if you're watching and you're not from Southeast Kansas. A couple of things. First of all, the high school team we cover most of the time, they're the Tigers, also Fort Scott. So I've slipped up once or twice already today in saying Tigers instead of Greyhounds. But also, Allen used to be Allen County Community College. They're in Iola. They have dropped the county moniker and just go by Allen Community College now. So that's a little rough. And then on top of that, there's Erie High School that is also the Red Devils. Same logo, same color scheme. So I'm trying to catch myself from saying the Erie Red Devils. I think I've said that a couple of times here today. This one's fouled off out of play by Dobrinsky. If we're back in play now, three balls and two strikes, two outs, nobody on. Bottom of the fifth. Fort Scott Greyhounds in a 5-5 tie with the Allen Red Devils. Three-two pitch on the way. Swung through and missed. So Broadwell, even though he gave up a base runner, does face the minimum here in the fifth after the Greyhounds went one or, went, or got a 1-2-3 inning in the top of the inning. But we'll go to the sixth. It's still 5-5. Allen and Fort Scott tied here at Lions Stadium in Fort Scott. So as we head to the sixth inning, it'll be Garrett Rush leading things off for the Red Devils. First pitch to him. Looks like we got a pinch hitter actually for the Red Devils. This is Caleb Horsey, red shirt sophomore. And now he's down in the count one and two after a couple of foul balls. Tied at five, top of the sixth. 
game one of the doubleheader today. Two balls and two strikes now. Game one should be the seven inning game. Unless we have to play more than that. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Grounded left side and that's gonna get, oh nice job to get a glove on it, but couldn't do anything with it after that. Parker Martin, or excuse me, uh, Owen Rush. And then his hat came off and blew almost all the way to the bag at second. Oh, nice, nice job by Shigematsu to field the grounder of the hat. Get it back to him. Go as an infield single there. For Caleb Horsey, first pitch here to Cale Clark is fouled back and out of play. Clark so far today, two for two officially. He's singled and doubled. He's also walked, so he's been on all three times. And now throw to first, runner back safely. I've seen a lot of pickoff moves since the starter, Gavin Shear left the game. Runner goes, swung at the plate, throw down is not in time. So nothing in two. Looked like maybe a hit and run was on there. Pitch did not look like it was gonna be a strike but it was swung on anyway. 0-2 to count on the batter. Here's the pitch, grounded right side. Going to be picked by the second baseman, Shigematsu. Gets it a first relatively routine play, one out. The runner does move up to third. And now... Armando Navarro will step in. He is two for three. Ferris singles and a strikeout in this game. First pitch is in there for a strike. I think it won. Grounded right back up the middle. That's going to get through for a base hit, and the Red Devils will take the lead. Small ball there to get the lead again for Allen here in game one. First pitch to Mies Robers. Catches the outside corner. The Allen catcher today so far is 0 for 2 with a walk. Takes that pitch outside. One ball and one strike. Oh, nearly got him. I think he thought that was going to be a breaking ball, and it just never did break. Nearly got him right up around Noggin. Two balls and one strike. Pitch is outside, so three and one now. Count from Wyatt Foley. Came in to get the final out of the fourth inning, then went one, two, three in the fifth. But here in the sixth so far has given up single, stolen base, 
and a run. And now here's the second strike, so that'll fill the count. Actually giving up a couple of hits here in the inning. Three balls and two strikes, though, on the batter, Robers. Payoff pitch hit out towards center field. And a nice catch there by Slot will retire the batter. Two outs here in the sixth. Looks like another pinch hitter for the Red Devils. This will be Anthony Taupa. First pitch to him is fouled back into the screen. One pitch is fouled back and out of play. Quickly, nothing in two. On the pinch hitter for the DH, Anthony Talpa. O2 pitch on the way, and that's outside. Runner at first, that's Navarro. One, one, one run already in in the frame for the Red Devils as they lead it now six to five. Grounder left side, and that'll get through for another base hit. The shortstop Parker Martin steps in. Left handed batter, first pitch to him is fouled back into the screen. One pitch, a little high and outside. One one pitch, that is outside as well. One ball and two, or excuse me, two balls and one strike. Checks the runners, now delivers. And just a little bit high again. Three balls and one strike now. On Parker Martin, who has walked twice, scored two runs, and grounded out to second. And he'll walk here. Time's going to be called by the Greyhounds. And Coach Hill will head out to the mound. Will we have another pitching change? We've seen three pitchers so far for the Greyhounds today here in game one. We'll be back here at Lions Field on the 20th more Greyhound baseball. Got a limited schedule this spring. We'll be over at the softball field next Saturday. It's the Greyhound softball team. We'll have a couple of home games as well.
Looks like we're ready to go here. Here's the pitch. Fouled and out of play. The wind is really gusting now out of the southeast. So nothing and one to count on Logan Martin. Base is loaded. Still two outs. So as most every baseball coach will say, focus on the batter and get out of the inning without any more damage. One-one pitch on the way. Swung through and missed. Strike number two. One-two on the way. Hit right out. Oh, and it gets just over the top of the second baseman. Shigematsu jumped for that one. Couldn't quite bring it in, and two runs score for the Red Devils. And that will be it. Looks like for Foley. Pitcher for the Greyhounds, number 31, Andrew Ryan. Andrew is a 6'2 lefty from Olathe, Kansas. Also a redshirt freshman for the Greyhounds. First pitch. To Colton Ayers, misses. Seven appearances. Ryan has thrown four and two-thirds innings, giving up two runs on two hits. Both of those runs were earned. Also walked seven and struck out seven, an ERA of uh, 3.86. And zip by a pitch. So the bases are loaded again. And back at the top of the order, Kyle Clowinu, who will be the ninth man to hit in the inning for Allen. Takes a first pitch strike there. Grounded back up the middle, picked over to second for the force, and they got him. 
Edwards guy does get out of the inning, but two or three more runs score for the Red Devils. They take an 8-5 to five lead. Led to the bottom of the sixth in just a few moments. This is Fort Scott, uh, Fort Scott Greyhound Baseball on Duck Bay TV.